to Psalms chapter 90. Psalms chapter 90 tonight. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. It says, Lord, Thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever Thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, Thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in Thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Um, notice how with God, you know, time, it's not like it is with us. A thousand years are nothing to Him. You notice from in verse 2, he said, you know, since God uh, says, Before the mountains are brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Since God has always been around from generation to generation, it's safe to say He might know a few things about how a person should use their time. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is biblical principles for time management. All right, And so, uh, no, we're going to see some things that God says that goes along with that. But God, he has, He's been around from generation to generation. He has seen the life of billions of people. You know, we've only had our own experience. We've only seen our own life. That's it. He knows. You know, and with God, a thousand years is nothing there but yesterday. And then look what it says in verse uh, 5. Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass, which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth, and groweth up in the evening. It is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. You know, our entire life, when put into perspective, it's really nothing more than just like a story that's told. You know, they. You know, you think about how they'll make a movie. Have you ever watched a movie about the life of an individual? You know, and that movie it only takes like two hours, but it's about a person's entire life. Can you imagine watching a movie about your entire life? A two-hour movie. What would that consist of? You know, I would think that'd be kind of depressing. Wow, two hours and that's all there was. But you know, in compare, you know, in the grand scheme of things, our entire life is just like a it's just like a little story. It's like a little sermon, maybe that I tell. It is. It's just. It's a little. It's just a little part, you know, uh, of everything. And we see here, and then verse ten says, "The days of our years are three score and ten. If by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength." labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We see, we saw earlier, uh, or, you know, earlier in the past, talk about how a thousand years is nothing to God, but for us, 70 or 80 years is everything, isn't it? I mean, 70 or 80 years, that is everything to us, but to God, a thousand years is absolutely nothing. And, you know, and our, so our entire life, when put into perspective, you know, to time itself, it is. It's just like a little story that's told. It's one little chapter. It's no big deal. And we can, you know, our, you know, we don't have a lot of time. And we can work hard to prolong our days. I mean, we could devote a good portion of our life to making sure we are healthy and that we eat right and we exercise. And that's fine if you want to do those things. But you all understand that you only might, maybe you'll only get an extra 10 years. And in the grand scheme of things, what is that? It's really nothing. There's not that much to it. Verse 11, he says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us to number our days. What's he saying there? I think we need to keep track of our time. I think we need to pay attention to what we're doing, you know, to how we are using our time. Here we are, we've got this world, this universe that has billions of people. It's been around for 6,000 years roughly. And we're only gonna, we are just one person in billions. We are only going to be here for 70 or 80 years out of thousands of years. So what are we going to do with this little bit of time that we have? How are we going to use it? What are we going to accomplish with it? And it's important that we manage our time well. And so I want to show you some biblical principles for time management. And the Bible, you know, so the Bible, I believe it's teaching us here, you know, manage your time, 
Number your days. Keep track of it. And time, a good way to compare it, something that we are all familiar with. You know, time, it's like our money, isn't it? And our money is very limited. Anybody feel like you, you, your money is very limited? You ever ask yourself, where did it all go? Okay, and that, that's kind of what time's like. You know, who, I mean, who's ever said, you know, I just got too much money? You know, not, not many people say that. And, you know, most people don't say, you know what, I've got too much time. Why can't I die earlier? You know, I mean, I guess some people do that, but, you know, that's not most people, and that's pretty sad when that happens. But it does, you know, our money, it's very limited. Our money disappears rapidly. We never have enough to do what we want to do. So we've got to manage what we've got. We've got to use what we have wisely. And many people today, they manage their time the same way they manage their money. And how do they manage their money? They don't. They don't manage their money at all. You know, they just kind of... Just let things happen. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. You know, they pay their bills. You know, to whoever's you know harassing them the most, whichever one they have to. You know, they'll think about paying that electric bill when their electricity goes off. The problem with that, when you wait that long, you're so far behind. There's no catching up. You know, they, they do that their water bill. I have people call the church all the time. Yeah, they're about to shut my water off. They're about to shut off my electricity, and you know, and they're wanting hundreds of dollars to help them out with that. And I'm thinking, man, you're hundreds of dollars behind. First of all, we don't have that money to just give a perfect stranger to pay their electric bill. But even if we did, they're going to be calling us next month. And, and we, we just can't afford it to pay everybody's light bills. We can't afford to do these things. These, cause we do manage our money here and we manage our money enough here to know we can't pay everybody's light bill. And these people, they don't do it. And people don't manage their time either. They just kind of go along. They go with the flow, just whatever I feel like doing, whatever I feel like spending it on. And just like people get in trouble for not managing their money, people get in trouble for not managing their time. You know, it's kind of like that punk that gets that paycheck. And what does he do? He goes, and I got cash today. And so he goes and he parties with that cash. Not thinking about the fact that bills are coming. Not thinking that, you know, this electricity that I've used, I'm going to have to pay for it. You know, this cell phone that I've been calling on and doing everything on, I'm going to have to pay the bill at the end of the month. They don't think about that. People will go into these stores, you know, Walmart, you go into Walmart, you want to sign up for a Walmart credit card today. You know, why do they do that? Because, you know, there's people who are going to want to buy things that they don't have the money for. And people will do, they'll go sign up, sign me up. I can walk out of this thing today or I can walk out of the building today with this item without paying any money, sign me up. And they don't even think about the fact that eventually you will have to pay for that money. And you know, when it comes to our time, you know, people don't think about the fact that, you know what? One of these days we're going to run out of it. One of these days time is going to be up for us. And there are some things that we need to make sure we get done while we have time. And so let's look at a few Bible principles so we can start thinking about these things, about managing our time. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. It says, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Um, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, now, a lot of these verses that I'm going to be using, they're not specifically referring to time management. Okay, But these are biblical principles that we see in the Bible. And it mentions here that we need to redeem the time. We need to use it. We need to walk circumspectly. You know, that, um, you know, we need, that word circumspectly, it means cautiously, with watchfulness, and, you know, with attention to guard against surprise or danger. We need to understand that when it comes to our time, first of all, you know, our time could be up tomorrow. You know, so we need to keep that in mind. You know, but at the same time, you know, we might have another 50, 60 years. So we need to we need to think about those things too. We need to be circumspect on that. We need to be careful. We need to be cautious with these things. And you know, we need to understand that when it comes to our time, there's a bunch of scams out there trying to take away all our time, just like there's a bunch of scams out there trying to take away all your money. Okay, now we all know about that. We all are cautious of the scams that are out there trying to take away our money. 
we're all scared of the phone salesman. Okay, I'm I'm such a nice guy. When I first got out of my own, when we first got married, I was always nice to the phone salesman, and I got burned a couple times. I hate to admit it, I got burned a couple times. I paid two hundred dollars for a phone, a regular telephone, and I remember I I paid two hundred dollars for it, and I went to Walmart later. Because I, I got the phone. It wasn't near as cool as I thought it was going to be. It came in the mail. And then I went into Walmart, and I was looking at the phones they had there that were way cooler for like 50 bucks. Now, I'm still embarrassed about that, but I did that. And you know what? After I got burned a couple times, I started hanging up on those people. I started being rude. I started doing stuff like my dad used to do. My, you know, They'd be like, hey, you know, is, is Tom McMurcher home? And he'd be like, yeah. And then he would go, and he would give the phone to one of us kids. you know, and then Or sometimes... They would just start talking. He'd just set the phone down and just let them talk. And that was back when real people called you. Now they have these stinking automated ones that call you, and so you can't even tell them off. And so it's you know that's no fun. But anyway, you know there are there's a lot of scams out there trying to get your money. And you know what? There's a lot of scams out there trying to get your time. So you better be circumspect. Circumspect. You know what are these scams? Television. You know, things like the television, the video games, you know, sports, you know, and you know, some of the things that I, that I hate that are scams that are pulling people away from the things of God is even just school things. Okay. Let me just share something with you too, especially about the public school. Okay. One of the reasons they pressure your kids to get involved in all these extracurricular activities, it's not because they're trying to make them smarter and better people. It's the more kids that sign up for these things, the more funding they get. All right? They need your kids to help them, as a school, get money. And if nobody's signing up for these stupid things, then they're not going to get any federal money. And then the, whoever it is that got hired to do that is going to be out of a job. But you all understand, when these schools come along and they're like pressuring your kids to sign up for all these things, your kids don't have to do these things. And many people, they can't... They can't be in church on Wednesday nights and sometimes even on Sunday because of stupid school activities. Folks, that is a scam. That is a waste of time. You are going to sacrifice the things of God so your kid can go play some sport that they stink at, that they're never going to make a dollar on? That's a joke. Now listen, I'm all for physical activity. I'm all for sports. I love sports. But you know what? I can can play sports with my kids. I can teach my kids. To be athletic. I don't need some gym teacher. And listen, what they're teaching me to do in school isn't going to help them anyway. The PE coaches aren't allowed to do anything anymore. They're not allowed to throw basketballs at the kids. They're not allowed to tell the boys, you know, stop being a girl. They're not allowed to use all those good motivators that they used to do back in the day that actually help whoop these kids into shape. You know, they can't call little Tubby, Tubby, and, you know, tell them, you know, to, you know, you know start running. They can't do all those things. They can't play rough games. They can't play smear the queer. They can't do anything like that that actually helps the kids and are good for the kids. And you're going to go and you're going to sign your kid up and get them where they can't, they can't be around the things of God. They can't be around church because, you know, I need my kids in these sports because that's just what good parents do. No, that's what some scam artist told you. You're some scam artist in a school that's using your child, trying to make merchandise of them. They told you that. Don't listen to these people. They're, it's a joke. And listen, if, they, if you can manage your time wisely and find ways to fit these things in, go for it. But let me tell you, it is, those things are not excuses to be out of church and get away from the things of God. That is a scam trying to eat up all your time. And it is amazing how many Christian people get all caught up in these things and they can't, they can't do the will of God because they've been scammed. They're caught up in so many things. They'll let their little kid play t-ball or whatever on a Wednesday night or even on Sundays. They can't even show up for church because their kid is in some sport. Folks, that is ridiculous. And, you know, the, so there, and there's all kinds of things. You know, the TV is just is eating up people's time. Well, I don't have time to read my Bible. But you're sure we're keeping up with all the stupid TV programs. You seem to know what's going on in the news world. You're pretty up to speed on everything that Fox News is putting out. But you're not, you know, you're not up to speed on the things of God. And we need to be careful. We need to understand that these things are just a waste of time. And our culture, you know, they, you know, they've done a good job in making us feel like, you know, these are things that we are supposed to do. These are things we're supposed to be a part of. You've got to have your kids signed up in this and this and this. If you want them to be, you know, good parents, if you want to raise good 
productive citizens. But folks, these are scams. Don't fall for it. Be wise. You know, don't set, you know, we need to make sure we don't sacrifice future blessing for instant gratification. You know, we need, we need to think about those things. Well, you know, I could give my tithe like I'm supposed to, or I could go buy this item that will bring me a little bit of pleasure. You know, I, I could give to the things of God. I could give towards missions and help them spread the gospel, or I could have, you know, instant gratification right here, right now. I mean, when we give to missions, you know, you don't always see instant results. You know, we don't always read the prayer letters and see that, hey, there's people that got saved this week. You know, thanks to, you know, thanks to the financial support. We don't, we don't see those things and they're just, we don't pay attention to it. And it's not like something physical we can look at and enjoy right there many times. And so what do we do? We get scammed by all these other things. You know what? I, if I quit giving emissions, I could get the better cable package. You know, I could maybe afford the more expensive car payment. I could get the new car instead of the used car. You know, what, what, all these things, we get caught up in them. And that, listen, don't sacrifice future blessings for instant gratification. You know, we've got to learn to say no to the things of the flesh. Parents, you've got to be able to, you need to teach your kids to say no to the things of the flesh. Listen, you're, you know, Parents these days, and especially parents who struggled when they were, you know, a lot of parents, you know, maybe they came from a poor family. They struggled growing up, but it's like they don't want their kids to ever have to struggle. Maybe they did without when they were kids. All the other kids got to, you know, wear the Air Jordans or whatever, and they didn't, you know, they had to wear the Walmart shoes, and it made them feel bad. Well, I can't let that happen to my kid. Well, you know what? Let it happen to your kid. The last thing you want to do is raise a little spoiled brat. And if you do, if you raise them thinking they've, what happens? These parents, they raise their kids thinking they've got to have the best of everything. I got to have all the name brand. And you know, and maybe these parents, they work hard to make it happen. But the problem is what you end up doing is you end up raising these little millennials who think that they should have the best of everything. You know, I should get college paid for by mommy and daddy. You know, I should have nice cars. I should have all these things. And they don't want to work for it. They don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to do without anything. But listen, sometimes you just need to tell your kids no because they need to learn to do without. You know, just they don't need the best of everything, even if you can afford it. Make them work for something, for Pete's sake. You know, make them wait for things. Make them actually save up for something. You know, make, make them learn some patience. But we don't do that. And we do, we get scammed all the time. We got to learn to say no to the things of the flesh. I think that's one of the best reasons for fasting. It helps us get control over the stinking flesh. We don't need to stuff our faces every time we feel like it. Every time we see, you know, a food advertisement, what do we do? We sit there like a lazy slug on the couch watching TV, food commercial comes up. And like a zombie, we get up, we walk to the refrigerator, we got to start stuffing our faces, you know, and just, we got to learn to say no to the things of the flesh. Your kids got to learn to say no to the things of the flesh. And we got, we got to you, we got it, this time that we have, it is precious and we can't be getting it scammed and taken away from us because we're just wasting hours and hours watching TV, surfing the internet, on social media, doing all these things that are so unproductive that don't accomplish anything. We need to use this time wisely. Look at Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. Luke chapter 14. And a lot, listen, a lot of this stuff is common sense, but I think we need to get reminded of it. But it says in verse 28, For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, that behold, uh, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Okay? This is counting the cost. Okay? Listen, time is money. Okay? Time is money. And one thing that people often do is whenever they commit to something, whenever they start something, they forget about the fact, that, you know what, this is going to cost some time. You know, if you're going to get involved in church, it's going to cost time. You're going to have to drive to church. You're going to have to sit in church. You know, you're going to, you're going to have, it's, it takes time. If you're going to get involved in soul winning, it's going to take time out of your schedule. 
It's it, all these things. They require time. If you're going to serve in the church, whether it be cleaning, whatever it is, these things all take time. And it's amazing how many people they'll say, yeah, sign me up. You know, I want to do this, but then uh, I'm, busy, I'm, I'm too busy. I can't do it. Well, then why'd you commit to doing it? You know, what? you didn't count the cost. You didn't think about the fact that this is going to take some time. People do, you know, they want to be a Sunday school teacher, or, you know, they want, they want to be a preacher, but they forget about the fact that, you know what, there's a cost to that. It's going to require a whole lot of Bible study and that's going to require time. It's going to require some work. We don't, you know, I, I want to be a soul winner, but we don't think about the work that's going to go into it. And listen, if you're going to be a good soul winner, it's more than just showing up. You need to be reading your Bible too. You need to be in the word. You need to be studied up. You need to be ready to give an answer. These things require work. And it's amazing how many people, they think that you can just do things and it's not going to require any time. I want to learn how to play the piano. Well, it's going to take a lot more than just a half hour piano lesson every week. My wife would say amen to that. If she could just get her students to practice. And it's, you know, and you do all these same parents who get scammed by all these after school things, they get scammed too. You know, they just think I've got, it's like their mentality. I got to have my kids signed up for a lot of things. And they do, they all sign their kids up for these music lessons over there because, oh, I want my kids in music. And so they think they can buy success for their kids by signing them up for music lessons. And they do, they sign them up for music lessons. They show up every week for their music lesson because they feel like we're doing something. But then they forget a very important thing. Your kid's supposed to practice every day at home by themselves. And they don't, they don't do it. They don't have them practice. Oh, you know, we, we didn't have time. Oh, really? Your eight-year-old kid's just too busy. He can't practice a half hour. How much TV is that kid watching? You know, they, yeah, you, it's, they don't think about, no, there's a cost if I'm going to do this. These things are going to require time. You know, we all want a paycheck, but we don't want to go to work. You know, we don't want to work 40 hours a week. We don't want to do these things. We don't think about the fact that these things take time. You know, you get these young millennials, they all want to get a paycheck eventually, but they forget they're going to have to leave home. They're going to have to get off social media every day. They're going to have to get away from their cell phones and their TVs, and they're going to have to actually go out and work long hours. Oh man, I can't do that. That requires too much time. Listen, that's just part of the cost. Listen, you know, if you want a paycheck, you don't get it for nothing. You've got to contribute something yourself. And you know what? A lot of that's going to be time. And not just time, but physical labor. And we do. You know, before you take on a big responsibility that's going to eat up your time, count the cost. Listen, if you're going to take another job somewhere, okay, what are the hours of this job? What is this going to cost me? Listen, if it's going to require, make it where you can't go to church, I say it's not worth it. Count the cost. You know, think about it. It's it's amazing. You know, the people, they'll go and they'll sign up for these things. And then they'll, you know, that nobody made them sign up for, whether it be a sport, whether it be a job. And then, oh, I I can't come to church anymore. Really? You can't come to church? Why can't you come to church? Well, because I've got this and this and this. Who who made you do that? Who stuck the knife to your back and forced you to do that? Did you not think of that when you signed up for it? Oh yeah, I just start a new job and it's going to require me to work every Sunday. I can't go, I can't go to church anymore. Didn't you think about that before you signed up for that job? You know, nobody made you take that job. We don't think of, you know, we don't think about these things. Count the cost. What's that going to cost you if you can't go to church anymore? What, how, how, what's that going to cost your family? What's that, how, you know, what's the cost going to be in your relationship with God? Count the cost of these things that you're doing. You know, how, you know, we need to think about, you know, how much time am I going to be able to spend with my family? Is it really worth it? A lot of people, they use, you know, they'll go into the military because the military pays good. Well, listen, they also require a great deal of your time, sometimes months and months away from your family. Are you willing to pay that price? Listen, those years, those young years of your children grow up, they're very valuable. That time with your wife is very valuable. Are you sure you want to pay that price? You need to think about the cost of that. And I, I'm telling you, people, they're not thinking about that. And you know, whenever, whenever a person says, I don't have time for something that somebody else has time for, you know what they're really saying is I have better things to do with my time. 
Because, you know, I, I don't have time to read my Bible. Oh, really? You know, you, so that you have something better to do with your time? Hey, listen, when you say I don't have time for something, that's a lie. Because listen, one thing where time is different than money, we all have the same amount. Okay? Now, we don't all have the same amount of money. Some people, they can be a little crazier with their money than the rest of us. You can be a little more loose with your money. You might not even have to manage that much you know, to be able to keep yourself out of trouble. But some of us, we got to manage every penny. But listen, when it comes to time, we all have 24 hours a day. Every, every one of us have 24 hours a day. And if you don't have time, it's because you're spending your time in a bad way. Especially if it's for something that you know, should be a priority. If it's for the things of God, for the house of God, for the word of God, these things should be priority. And if you say, I don't have time, it's not because you don't have time. It's because you have wasted your time with something else. All of us have the same amount of time. And so you, when you're saying that, when I, you know, if I'm encouraging, hey, you know, this is something you ought to do. This is something that I do. This is something God wants us to do. Well, I don't have time for that. You're basically saying you have something better to do with your time. We all have the same amount of time. Many And people do. They foolishly accept jobs that will make it impossible for them to go to church, impossible to spend time with their families, have a relationship with God. Listen, you just wasted your time on something. You mismanaged your time. Those things ought to be priorities. You know, the parents, they get foolishly involved. They get their kids involved with things that are going to take them away from the more important things. And I'm telling you, it's... It's a waste. You're, you're getting caught up in a scam. And so while we all have an equal amount of time per week, and we do, we all have the same amount of time per week, every one of us, we don't all have an equal time of life. That's one area where it's not equal. Look at James chapter 4 and verse 13, another great principle we see here. It says, Go to now, ye that say... Today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So we do. We all have an equal amount of time in the day. Every one of us. Same amount of time every day. But when it comes to how many days we have, that's not equal. And we don't know how many days that we have. We can't just assume we're going to get our three score in 10 years. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay? Everything might seem great today, but it's amazing how one day can change everything. One event. One accident. One catastrophe. Look how much our world changed just after 9-11. I mean, it, it, it changed everything. Who knows when the next event is going to take place, the next catastrophe. We don't know what, what tomorrow could bring. Any, things can change so fast. We need to take advantage of this time we have. You know, who knows? You know, I mean, something could happen tomorrow and, you know, some you know, Christian could go do something crazy. And then they'll start passing laws, making things difficult for us. You know, one soul winner goes and kills somebody out soul winning. You know, they're going to try banning soul winning. We don't know. We don't know when things are going to start getting difficult. We know they're really going to be getting difficult eventually. But we don't know when it's going to start. We don't know what a day may bring forth. So we need to take advantage of the time we have right now. I could have an accident tomorrow and I can get to where I can't, can't walk. Tomorrow, you know, I, I won't be able to go out door to door like I do now. I don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. You know, we can't assume we get the three score in 10 years. And so there are some things we need to understand we can't put off. Things of eternal significance. Listen, when it comes to managing your time, we need to understand that, you know, what? all right, while we've all got 24 hours in a day, we don't have tomorrow guaranteed. So you know what? Let's make sure we take care of things like salvation right now. You don't put off things like salvation. You know that we need, I think we ought to make sure we're prioritizing, making sure your family is saved, making sure, you know, th those that you love 
have heard the gospel because we don't know what a day may bring forth. We don't know when we're going to get that unexpected phone call telling us about some tragedy or catastrophe. And so we need to make sure we don't put things off that are of eternal significance. You know, we don't want to get involved in destructive behavior assuming you're going to have time to clean up the mess. Okay? I've, I've done that before when my wife's gone. You know, I let the house get out of control. Because you know what? As long as I know when she's coming back, I can clean up. Uh, I'll, I'll just clean up that, that day before she gets back. That's, that's usually what, what we do. I tried that the first time she went and helped at the volleyball camp. She was gone for like a week. And I, I was going to keep the house clean. I was going to keep up with it. And it was a nightmare. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? And so the next year, I said, forget it. And you know, she still wasn't impressed with how clean the house was when she got back. So the next year, I just said, who cares? I let the house get completely trashed. I mean, she would have been humiliated if anybody would have came over. Nobody came over. It was, it was messy. But then, the day before she got back, then we started cleaning it up. And you know what? She was equally unimpressed that time, too. But you know what? I did a whole lot less work that week. <laughs> and so, But listen, you know, we need to understand, though, that some, you know, we're not always guaranteed when something's going to happen. Or, you know, or that we're not always guaranteed we're going to be able to clean up our mess. You know, and that's just it when, when, you know, when it comes to raising your children, spending time with your family. Okay, I, I would discourage any dad who has young children or children at home to take some job that's going to take you away from your family for, you know, weeks and months or even years. Don't assume you're going to be able to clean the mess up when you get back. You, you can't do that. And I, I see parents do that. And it's foolish. Why would you do that? Count the cost of that. This time that you have is very valuable. And don't assume you're going to be able to clean the mess up. You know, don't let your relationship with your spouse, you know, get messy. Assuming you'll be able to clean it up later. Take care of these things right now. Prioritize these things. We need to make decisions like we've got another hundred years to live. But at the same time, like we might not have tomorrow. What does that mean? Well, you know, when it, you know, I want to make sure, you know, when I'm thinking about the future, you know, there's nothing wrong with saving for retirement and things like that. You know, it's okay to plan on those things. But, you know, I don't, when we say, you know, we might not have tomorrow, that doesn't mean go run up your credit card. Okay. You know, we need to assume I'm going to have to pay that credit card bill. I'm going to have to pay those bills. And so it's going to cause us to, you know, be careful and think about the fact that, you know, we've got future. We have years ahead of us. But at the same time, you know, as a church, you know, I want this church to be here till Jesus Christ returns. Well, what if he doesn't return for another 50 years? Well, that means we need to be, you know, walking circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We need to make sure we're soul winning, you know, not just because we want to win these people before Jesus Christ comes back. But because, you know, we want to make sure that we're continuing to grow as a church, that we're bringing people in, you know, the, you know, the word teaching right doctrine, we've got to make sure that we're, you know, keeping up with these things. And so, you know, we, we base our decisions that way. Like we've got another hundred years, but at the same time, if the Lord, you know, if we're, if took us home tomorrow, if I died tomorrow, I could die in the will of God. And listen, the key, this is something everybody needs to think about. Young people, you know, if you, you know, one of the things they always think about, you know, who am I going to marry? You know, how am I going to find that right spouse? The key to making sure you're in the will of God 10 years from now is be in the will of God today. Do God's will today. And if you're in God's will today, you have a much better chance of being in God's will tomorrow. And so think about those things. Don't think, well, I'm going to, I want to go try this out. And I'll fix, you know, whatever, you know, I'm going to sow my wild oats right now. I want to go have some fun right now and I'll clean up the mess and I'll get right 10 years from now. I'll worry about starting the family and actually being an adult when I'm 30. That's what a lot of people are trying today. No, don't do that. Be in the will of God today. And if you do, you're more likely to be in the will of God years down the road. So turn over to John chapter nine and verse four. Another principle we see here he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
Well, while it's good to have goals in your life or even a list of things you would like to accomplish, it's important that you have wise priorities. Hey, what Jesus is saying here, you know, when, he, when he's saying, uh, uh, I lost the spot. Yeah, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. There are some things you can only do in the daytime. Okay? Listen, if you've got work that you need to get done, maybe if you have yard work, you've got to do yard work in the daytime, don't you? There might be other things you can do while it's dark. Okay? There's some things that can only be done at certain times. You can only plant a crop in the springtime. You don't do that in the fall. You have to do that in the springtime if you want to actually have a harvest in the fall. We need to make sure we prioritize things. Okay? And we, if, if you want to have good adults someday, you need to be raising good kids right now while they're little. You need to train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And a lot of times we get everything backwards. You know, we get, we get everything all mixed up, but there are some things that have to be done in the daytime. There was a movie years ago, I, I saw years ago, it was a Cary Grant movie, where he was like from some rich family and he decided he was going to retire like, you know, at a young age. And he was going to do, do all the retirement stuff while he was young and could enjoy it. And then after that, he would go into the family business and work. And he, it, was, it was a stupid movie. You know? And you know what? That's a stupid mindset. Because listen, right now when you're young, that's when you should be working. That's when you should be saving up for when you're older. Because there's a day coming where we're not going to be able to work like we used to. Where we're not going to be able to put in the labor like we used to. Our bodies are going to get old. They're going to get wore out. We're not going to be able to do the things that we used to do. So you know what? You ought to work while you're young. So you can take it easy when you're older, not the other way around. That's the millennial generation. They're all still wanting to take it easy and they never want to work at any point. But you got, there's some things it's better to do while you're young. I personally believe you ought to have your children while you're young, while you've got some energy. You've got people, our society today, they're not having their kids until they're in their 30s and sometimes 40s. Well, listen, my kids, they wear me out bad enough right now. You know, I start, we started having Tommy and Jason, you know, we had them real quick. I was in early twenties and they wore me out in my early twenties. I, I don't think I could, I'm going to be able to handle that one of my forties. And you know, now that I'm getting older, you know, we, if we have more kids, yeah, I'll be older. They wear me out more, but now I've got help that can, that make it a lot easier. I personally think it's smart to do it when you're young. You know, do these things while you're young. And people do, they're always, they're always getting our society. They've got everything backwards. But there are, it, uh, when it comes to certain things, there are better times to do some of these other things. My wife and I, when we first got married, one of the things we talked about that we wanted to do was go to Israel. I went to Israel when I was 19 years old, and I fully intended to go the next year. But we got engaged. So guess what? I couldn't afford it. And so, uh, you know, we just, you know, we, but we said, you know, I mean, I, I was like, we, we need to go to Israel. I want to go to Israel. But we got married. Nine months later, Tommy was born. Twelve and a half months later, Jason was born. Guess where we haven't been yet? Israel. All right. You know, we can't afford it. And listen, we, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of vacations and things that we would like to do, places that we would like to go. But you know what? You can travel when you're old. You can go see the world and see the sights when you're old, but you can't have kids when you're old can't raise a family when you're old. So you know what? We're doing all those things right now. And hopefully, you know, our plan has always been that after our youngest got married, we take a second honeymoon to Israel. But you know what? Now the way I preach, they probably wouldn't let me in that country. <laughs> so that's probably, I'm probably going to have to wait till New Jerusalem. And so I don't, I'm, I'm now I'm scared of what would happen to me if I went over there. And I don't think most of my Baptist, uh, friends that I have would help get me out of there. I think they would let me rot over there. I think that, I think they would probably turn me in if I, if I went over there. So I'm kind of scared to go over there right now. So we'll have to go see something else. But at the same time, you know, you said you, you got, you got to prioritize on those things and our society, they get everything backwards. There are some things though, you know, they are, they're, they're better done now. They're, it's better to do these things while you're young. And listen, I'm all for going fishing. But you know what? There's a time to go fishing. There's a time not to go fishing. Sunday is not the time to go fishing. All right. You know, 
Manage your time. Think about these things. You know, use it at, at the right time. Some of the things that eat up a lot of our time, you know, they they're they're temporary and those deserve your focus right now. I said, you know, you're having children at home. That's temporary. That deserves that deserves my focus right now. I need to be paying attention to them right now. And look, and I and I need at the same time though, I need to make sure I'm paying attention to my wife. You know when a lot of marriages end? It ends after the kids all grow up and they're out of the house. The parents paid so much attention to the kids that they forgot about each other. And then the kids grew up, left the house, and then parents found out, you know what? We don't like each other. We're not compatible. We've got nothing to work for anymore. And then they end up getting divorced. And so, you know, you got you to keep all those things in mind. All right. Hey, this is how we got to think right now. I've got the kids at home right now. This is our time to be raising them. But... This woman that I'm living with, while at all the kids are going to go one of these, she's staying around. So I need to keep that in mind. I've got, to, I've got to factor those things in when I'm managing my time and when I'm prioritizing things. So in other words, whenever there's a conflict between mom and the kids, well, you know what? I can make the kids mad at me, but you know, eventually they're going to be gone. Wife's staying with me forever, so guess whose side I'm going to be on? You know, <laughs> be on be on the mom's side. I think that's just, I think that's just wise right there. But you know, uh, you know, said retirement's great, but there's a time for work, and there is there's a time for rest. And I think the time for work is when you're young, when you've got the energy, when you have the strength. We've got to think about these things. And so I don't know if there you know if there's a country in this world that's more stupid with their money than America. I mean, our, our country is ridiculous. Our government is stupid with money. But, you know, I do. I believe that we in our culture are equally foolish with our time. And if you're not getting the things accomplished that you should because of a lack of time, it's your own fault. All of us have 24 hours in a day. So we need to think about time. Okay, when it, come, when it comes to church, okay, when it comes to getting places and doing things. I don't know if you all realize this, but, you know, we haven't learned how to teleport yet. And, you know, it's amazing, too, how, you know, I understand sometimes with job schedules and things, it's difficult. But it's amazing how some people are just late for everything. And it's like, you know, well, you, know, you knew where that place was that you were supposed to go. You knew it was so many miles from, you know, your house to that place. Did you not factor that in? Did you not count the cost? You know, and listen, you know, we've all got it figured out when it comes to our place of employment, how to get there in time. It's amazing how we've all figured out how to manage that time. But when you don't have somebody screaming, maybe I just started screaming at people on that kind of stuff. But no, I, I, I'm a nice guy. But, you know, we do. We got to think about these things. We all have 24 hours in a day. If you're not reading your Bible, when, when other people are reading their Bible, it's because you're misusing your time. You're not managing it right. We, uh, you know, all of us have the same amount of time in a day and let's use that time wisely. And so I hope you'll follow these principles for uh, time management. We need to redeem the time. And so with that, let's all stand together.